Hi everyone. Have you always wanted to grow watermelon but you didn't think you could because you don't have enough space or you have a short growing season? Well the key is the variety that you grow. Today I'm going to show you how to grow watermelon in a raised bed or a container which is a perfect variety no matter how little space you have. Full-size watermelon are real space hogs that require a long growing season. It usually takes them about four months to go from seed to harvest, and the fruit can weigh up to 30 pounds. On the other hand, sugar babies are a much more compact plant, smaller vines, smaller fruit, around 10 to 12 pounds, and it only takes them about 10 weeks to go from seed to harvest. They're very well suited for growing in containers or small raised beds, especially when you grow them on a trellis, which is what I'm gonna show you today. And not to mention the fact that they are super sweet, very high in sugar content, packed with sweetness and flavor. They really live up to their name. Sugar babies are very easy to grow on a deck or a patio. You wanna grow them in at least a 10 gallon container up to about a 20 gallon container, or you can also grow them in a small little raised bed, which we're gonna do here. This is a three foot Smart Pots little shorty raised bed. It's fabric. It works really well for a smaller space. Now I have already recharged and topped off my little raised bed here with compost post worm castings, organic fertilizer. There's a link down below to all the soil videos so you know exactly how to do that. But first, before we get our plants in, I'm gonna install a super easy trellis. I'm gonna use two pieces of ladder mesh to make a nice little archway over my raised bed here. This stuff is really inexpensive. It costs about four to five dollars a piece. You can usually find it in the masonry department of your local hardware store. And you're gonna need some cable ties. So a super inexpensive trellis and it's gonna look really nice with my sugar baby watermelon and climbing on it. Very easy to install. So what I'm gonna do first is to put one piece of the ladder mesh into a little shorty here. I'm just gonna push it all the way down into the bottom of the raised bed and then form a nice little arch and put the other end in. Super, super quick, easy, and inexpensive to install. And then we're gonna double up with the second piece here in the front. In the ladder mesh, each piece is about eight feet long. So it doubles over to make a really nice trellis for your watermelon. Now I'm gonna use my cable ties to connect the two pieces together at each rung of the ladder. Snip off the ends of the cable ties, and you're all set. Got the trellis installed, cost around $10, only took about five minutes to put in. You really can't go wrong with that. Now, a couple little things about watermelon that you need to know so you can grow a lot. They love warm temperatures, around 70 to 95 degrees they grow best, and you wanna put your container or your raised bed in a full sun spot. The more, the better. Eight to 10 hours is really ideal. And you can grow them from transplants, which I started indoors about a month ago, or you can grow them from seed. We're gonna do both. So first off, I'm gonna pop a couple of my sugar baby transplants right here in my uh, smart pots raised bed I'm just gonna pull them out of my little transplant pot here and I'm gonna put one plant right next to one of the legs of the trellis so it can climb up as it grows just gonna dig a little hole super easy to plant just pop it right in there and we'll plant another one on the other side so they can meet in the middle. The sugar baby watermelons can hang down from the trellis. They're gonna look really pretty. You are gonna love growing these on your deck or your patio. You can just step right outside the door and pick yourself a nice little sugar baby watermelon. Now, if you don't have transplants started indoors, don't worry about it. As long as the weather is warm, you can plant seeds right in your raised bed. So I've got some sugar baby seeds in my melon seed collection and in my container garden seed collection. And I do like to plant both from transplants and from seeds because that way I don't have way too many sugar babies to harvest at once. Kind of spreads the harvest out so you get sugar babies all summer long. So I am going to pop in a couple of seeds here. I always like to plant more than one seed and more than one transplant just in case something happens and you lose one to bugs or critters or pests. So just pop in the seeds there right next to the drip irrigation so they get plenty of water and I'm gonna do the same down at the other end. Be 
You can grab the watermelon seed collection over at CaliKimGardeningHome.com. It has five different varieties. The Sugar Baby is one of them, as well as some cantaloupe and full-size watermelon too. Now, those of you that have watched me for a long time, you know what I'm about to do, right? Watering and feeding. Super important, especially for watermelon. They are heavy feeders. They need a consistent amount of water. After all, they are, they are watermelon, right? So first off, we're gonna water and feed them with my go-to plant cocktail, the fish fertilizer. Good nitrogen in here, guys. You want the watermelon to really take off, get a lot of really nice green leafy growth. This is what's gonna help it do that. Uh, really good stuff here and super inexpensive. You can grab it at your local garden center. Then I'm going to add my other go-to is my Vermistera Vitality. A nice slow steady growth with the Vitality and really helps the plants be healthier. And because it really does help with absorption, you don't need to use near as much fish fertilizer when you're using the Vitality. So a really great little plant cocktail. Oops, spilled a little bit there. We'll just scoop it right into the watering can. So I'm just going to soak down my brand new watermelon plants here. And you should see some new growth from your seeds in about uh, five to seven days, as long as the weather is nice and warm, between 70 and 90 degrees, they're really gonna grow fast. And your little transplants are really gonna take off. They're gonna put out little tendrils, and you may need to kind of help train them to the trellis when they first start to grow with a little piece of twine or stretchy garden tape. But as they grow, the tendrils will naturally wrap around the trellis till they form a nice little arch here. And you can even actually plant some more shade tolerant vegetables in the middle here, like some lettuce or greens that will benefit from the shade that the trellis will provide. One thing you need to know about watermelon is it's very prone to diseases such as powdery mildew and downy mildew, which can really wipe out your plants. And we've also been having a lot of problems here this year with white flies and aphids, probably because of all the rain we have, which can really suck the sap and the juices out of your plant. So what I'm doing this year is treating the soil and the plants right when I get them planted to prevent the problem before it gets out of control. I'm working with Bonite on this video, and what I'm gonna do is spray the soil with Captain Jack's Neem Max. Now I'm loving this product because it's a four-in-one pesticide and insecticide and it kills all stages of the bugs from eggs on up to larvae to adults. It has this cool little battery powered sprayer. And when I spray the soil here it's going to kill the eggs before they hatch and take care of the problem before it gets out of hand. I'm also going to go ahead and spray my transplants here because that will help with the powdery mildew and the downy mildew. If there happen to be any little bugs lurking on there, we'll take care of those too. So it's just a really nice, all-encompassing product. Neem Max is for organic gardening. It contains pure cold-pressed neem oil with azadiractin, which is the component in the neem tree that kills the chewing and sucking insects. So it's a really great product to have in your garden tool shed. So we're just drenching down the soil here. And when you're using it as a preventative spray, you want to spray it every 10 to 14 days to make sure that you take care of all the creepy crawlies and the diseases before they get out of hand. And you do want to apply it to your plants in the early morning or in the evening, not in direct sunlight. I really hope you found this video helpful and are one step closer to growing watermelon no matter how little space you have in your garden. Let me know in the comments if you're going to be growing sugar babies along with me this summer. And if you need seeds, head over to CaliKimGardeningHome.com, grab the melon seed collection or the container garden seed collection, and we're going to grow a ton of sugar babies together this summer. While you're there, don't forget to grab the Grow Your Groceries with CaliKim subscription box. The May boxes are only available until May 23rd. You can get $7 off your first month with the code GROWYOURGROCERIES. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next video.